2,000 years after the departure of Jesus the Christ. The prophets are back to teach the real Jews, the 12 tribes of Israel, their true nationality. This is their campaign. Man, how you, what's your name? Orlando. How you doing? What's your name, brother? Can you Orlando, what's your nationality according to the Bible? Simeon. All praises, all praises. So, what we doing over here, we teaching our people how they how to walk as an Israelite. Because a lot of people walk around, because I was meeting brothers back there. They say, I know I'm, I'm Judah. Some say they know they Levi. But the problem is, we still walking as African Americans. That's the problem. So how do we walk as a Simeon, or a Judah, or a Levi, or an Israelite? How do we walk as one? Scriptures? Get that. Deuteronomy 10 and 12. They brought that up earlier, but... I'm going to read it. I'm going to show you how you walk as an Israelite because, like I said, a lot of people know the tribe they're from, but you still operate. Action-wise, you're still walking like an African-American. Read that. Deuteronomy 10 verse 12. And now, Israel, what does the Lord thy God require of thee? But to serve the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways. To do what? To walk in all his ways and to love him. How are you going to show you how you walk in his ways? Read on. And to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. To keep the commandments of the Lord. To do what? To keep the commandments of the Lord. So I'm going to ask you a question. You got a girlfriend? Okay. Is she, are you married to her or no? See? That's not keeping the commandments. Read that. Um, give me 40 pages. First Corinthians 5 and 1. I'm going to show you. Because in America that teaches us boyfriend and girlfriend. But in the Bible, it's not so, because a man must marry her. If you sleep with a woman, you got to do what? You got to marry her. Hold 1 Corinthians. Give me Exodus 22, 16. Hold that. Exodus 22, 16. Huh? Exactly. So, okay, give me Tobit. Give me Tobit 7, 13. I'm going to show you. With the, I think 22 and 7. You do got to do that. You're right. Once you lie with her, she's supposed to be your wife. But what proves that she's your wife? Besides lying with her. What else proved that? The paperwork. You see what I'm saying? I'm going to prove that in the scriptures. I think it's Tobit uh, 7, 14 or 13. I don't believe the paperwork means nothing. 7 and 12. 7, 14. Give me 7, 14. Tobit 7, 14. Hold up. Read it. Read. You're right. The brother said, the scriptures say once you lie with a woman, she's your wife. You, she's supposed to be your wife. But what proved that she's your wife? I'm going to read it for you right here. Read on. Tobit 7 verse 14 and called Edna his wife. And called who? Edna his wife. And took paper and did what? And took paper and did write an instrument of covenants and sealed it. And did what? And sealed it. What's that called today? Marriage certificate. You gotta you gotta you gotta seal the deal because you can get up and leave her. There's a lot of brothers be sleeping with women and have kids, guess what? And they leave the woman with the kid. Is this such and such and such, they're going to say, is he married to you? No. So he's scot-free, so he carry on doing a hormone and fornicating still with other women, but he never sealed the deal with the sister. So technically, she's not your wife. This is just what they call today, baby mama. Now give me Exodus 22 and 16. I'm going to that for you. Exodus 22 verse 16 uh -huh. And if a man entice a maid If a man speak game to a woman That's what it's saying Entice means speak game to her Read That is not betrothed She's not promised to no one else Today they call that And she's not engaged to no one else Betrothed Read on And lie with her And do what? And lie with her uh -huh. He shall surely endow her to be his wife Like you said earlier You got to endow But how do you endow her to be her, the wife? What you got to do? Paperwork you got to go to the courthouse and go ahead and sit up in front of the judge and get a witness and seal it day and get your marriage certificate. 
That's honorable. Give me Hebrews 13 and 4. That's what's honorable in our sight of God. If you do anything outside of that, that's fornication, adultery, um, um, strong sexual desire, all these things that we learn from TV, from radio, from friends, from the streets, from the blocks, we learn that's not scriptural what we do today. All these people walking around with baby mamas and baby daddies, that's not scriptural. Read that. Hebrews 13 verse 4, uh -huh. marriage is honorable in all, uh -huh. and the bed undefiled, uh -huh. but whoremongers uh -huh. and adulterers, God will judge. God will do what? But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. So if you're not married to that woman that you're sleeping with, what does God call you? He call you what? Read that last part again. But whoremongers, what? Whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. So what are you in the sight of God today? A what? A whoremonger. Well, he, he saved King David. He saved King David. King David committed adultery. What? You, you King David? No, of course okay. not about that. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, but That's like me doing my sins. And you do the same thing. No, I'm not saying it's right. Okay. I'm not saying it's right. Okay. But give me, give me, give me, give me, give me the apocrypha. Uh, I think it's Sirach 37 and 8. Since you mentioned King David, real quick, go to Second Samuel 12 and 10. Read that. Read this. Second Samuel chapter 12 and verse 10. Because David is not an excuse, brother. Listen to it. Watch this. 12 and 10. Watch this, watch this. Listen what happened with David. Because he didn't get killed. Like the brother is bringing up. Watch this. 2 Samuel 12 verse 10. Now therefore, the sword shall never depart from thine house. You hear that, brother? Nathan told David, the sword shall never depart from your house. What that mean? That means you're going to be getting judged for the rest of your life. So, David, rather death than getting judged from the rest of your life. Read on. Because thou hast despised me and hast taken the wife of your lawyer, the Hittite, to be thy wife. And he committed adultery. You know what David did? David saw another man's wife naked. She was taking a shower. He saw her naked. He said, yo, this woman is beautiful. It was the way she looked. All of us know what, how some gorgeous women look. We know how. We know what it is. Hourglass, Coca-Cola bottle. But he saw her in the shower. So what happened? He well, he took her to be the wife. He called her over, had sex with her, and committed adultery. Basically, he committed the law. He committed committed the sin. Thou shall not commit adultery. Then we know what he did. She got pregnant. She got pregnant. Then he sent the husband to war. It put him on the front lines and he got killed. So, Nathan the prophet comes along the scene. He says, David. He gave David a riddle. He said, there were two, uh, two men. Poor man and a rich man. He basically gave him a riddle. Then after he gave the riddle to David, David said, Yo, whoever you talking about is evil as hell. Let's kill him. Let's murder that man that's wicked. Nathan said, the man I'm talking about is you. So what happened with David? David got judged. That's why Nathan just told him, the sword shall never depart from your house. Read it again. Now therefore, the sword shall never depart from that house, because thou hast, because thou hast despised me. So you got a lot of brothers who like to sleep with other men's wives. Begging with DMX, say, you begging for pee that's not even yours. That's what brothers are doing. Having sex with a woman that's not even theirs. Right? That's adultery. That's what a lot of people are doing. Side men, side chick, side woman. Whatever that is, that's adultery. That's what David did. Now let's read verse 11. Verse 11. Thus said the Lord, Behold, I will rise up evil against thee. So God has the power to send evil when you do evil. When you do evil, God sends Satan to do what he has to do. Because Satan listens to God. Satan answers to God. That, that story that you got confused with Lucifer, that has nothing to do with the Bible. Lucifer is the king of Babylon today. There was, there's no biblical scripture that says God and Satan had a fight. Never said that. Satan, when you read the book of Job, remember Job? Satan was sent in Job and he told God, have you considered, I mean God told Satan, have you considered my servant Job? You remember that? And Satan said, no, you protected him. So when God took the protection from Job, Satan started tempting the hell out of um, Job. 
So, likewise David. Satan was all on David, and David didn't even realize it until he understood his mistake. A lot of times with sin, you're not going to realize your mistake until it's over. And then once you did it, you signed the death certificate. Read it again. Thus said the Lord, Behold, I will raise up evil against thee out of thine own house. So in your house, there's going to be evil in your house. That's why a lot of y'all got problems in your family, because a lot of y'all come in adultery. Your kids don't listen to you, your, 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 your brother don't want to hear you out, your family hates you. Why? Because you are in the midst of sin. And I will take thy wives before thine eyes. Back in the day, men had multiple wives. David's wives were taken away, taken away from him. And give them unto thy neighbor. And they're going to be committed adultery. So basically, when you commit adultery, now your wives are going to commit adultery on you. See how that feels. And he shall lie with thy wives in the sight of the son. And everybody's going to know about it. So that's a stain on the reputation of the king. For thou didst it secretly. But I will do this thing before all Israel. See that word Israel again? But the Bible is only talking about Israel, brother. And before the son. And David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. So that's how we got to understand things. When we, when evil happen, evil things happen to us, we have to say, you know what? I messed up. I'm in sin. Not blame everybody for your problems. You got to say, I messed up. I messed up. I sinned. And when David said that, Moses had a little bit more mercy on David than the original uh, death certificate. He gave it a little, right. Then when we read in Romans 9, he said, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion David was loved by the Most High more than everybody so if David got that mercy you think we gonna get that same mercy from God? we hope so but he ain't David that's what the brother is saying we don't practice polygamy today because Christ said, Christ said one wife today in the New Testament God says one wife Cornelius was a servant. He only had one wife. Only when you read King David and Solomon only had multiple wives. Why? Because he was ruling the earth. Only when we ruling the earth, that's like officer saying, is okay to do. But now we servants. Are we ruling today? That's why polygamy is a sin. Get that 1 Corinthians 7 and 1 and 2. 1 Corinthians 7 and 1 and 2. 1 Corinthians 7 verse 1. This is why like officer saying, Christ was speaking through the spirit of Paul and said this. Now concerning the things wherefore ye wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, he said it's better do like I am, because Paul, Paul never had a wife. He said it's better to walk how I walk. But nevertheless, if you can't contain yourself or dis discipline yourself, read, let every man have his own wife, have multiple wives. His own wife, that's possessive, his own wife. That ain't two, three wives, one wife, we do And let every woman have her own husband. It will say, does that husband have an S behind it? Own husband, one wife, it said wife, it didn't say wives, read it again from the top. Let every man have his own wife. One wife, plural, I mean, singular. And let every woman have her own husband. Let the husband render unto the wife do whatever is going into it. When she like you, 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 you provide that and same thing vice versa. So it's telling you, that's why Christ spoke to Paul and say one wife. And then people like to use King David and King Solomon as an excuse to justify their lust. Because we, that's all it is, is lust. You see what I'm saying? Read that to oh, read this. 32 and 17. So what? 32 verse 17. This is what I wanted to bring up earlier. A sinful man will not be reproved, but find it an excuse, does what? Find it an excuse according to his will. We are going into according to your own lust. That's why a lot of brothers believe in polygamy because that's they're going off their own lust, their own will. Because that ain't scriptural. Because we ain't ruling today. We can't even take care of one wife, let alone you want two, three wives. Right, right. I got a McDonald's job to take care of four, five wives that got, each of them got a baby. I can't even do that. I get, I gotta have four, five jobs, and you can't even get it. You can't even work that much because you like liable to get fired. So you can't even take care of them. King David took care of his wives. King Solomon took care of his wives because they were ruling the earth. 
So we ain't ruling today. You see what I'm saying? Give me first Corinthians 11 and um one. Read that. Oh, I'm gonna give you one more scripture. See if you, see if you, see if you got the spirit of Christ in you. Read that. First Corinthians 11, verse one. Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Now I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things and keep the ordinances as I deliver them to you. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. So who's the head of the man? Christ. Read on. And the head of the woman is the man. Who's the head of the woman? Man. Read on. And the head of Christ is God. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered. Having his what? His head covered, dishonoring his head. What that saying, Orlando? So what should we do? Even all praises to the most high. So when the Bible coming out, like this brother next to you, you got to do what? Have your head uncovered. That way you can honor who? Your head, Christ. That's all I want to get you. All praise. You got a flyer, brother? All praise. We got a school down the street. There's a number on there. You can contact us. And we got classes seven days a week, three times a day, seven days a week. So call us, brother. You got a condo because if you don't, you're going to still be around the brothers in the world. They will pull you back to that like sinful life. You understand that? Daniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.